With Twilight Masquerade newly released and the North American International Championships on the horizon, this is a very important installment of my Best Decks and Standard series. The ranking of decks today will be rooted in my personal opinion based on my understanding of the archetypes and how they pair up against the rest of the meta. Starting with Lost Zone Giratina as our number 10 deck. Now Lost Zone Giratina is a tried and true fan favorite. I'm sure there's a lot of viewers watching right now that have become very comfortable with Lost Zone Giratina over its time in standard format. This list from the recent Champions League Sapporo slots out the Iron Leaves EX, which had been a tech for Charizard EX in our previous format, for the new Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX, which is a really strong card and very similar to Radiant Charizard. Now in Japan, the Charizard EX Pidgeot EX archetype has fallen very, very low in popularity compared to where it was. So it seems like the Iron Leaves EX tech has been less useful and less popular in the Japanese meta. I'm not sure if it's going to continue into the North American meta. We might assume that a lot of players will stay on Charizard, even if it's a little worse into the meta just for comfort and because it is still a very, very strong card. So we could see Iron Leaves EX come back into the Giratina deck. Some of Giratina's best matchups include Maridon, Pidgeot Control, and Snorlax Stall, all of which are going to be included in today's top 10. And some of its most unfavored matchups include Lugia V-Star, Gardevoir, and now if you're not playing Iron Leaves EX, I actually don't think you have a great Charizard Pidgeot matchup, so I would put that in the unfavored now as well. Moving on to number 9, this deck was previously number 1, it's Charizard EX with Pidgeot EX. Now this deck has been my favorite in the previous format, I've earned like 250 championship points or something crazy with this deck. Um, played it to a top eight finish at Orlando, played it for a bunch of League Cups, and I don't think it's even in the top five decks in this upcoming format for NAIC. Uh, between Dragapult coming out, Dragapult's a brand new deck that's going to be a problem, Snorlax stall getting better, Pidgeot Control becoming more mainstream, and Lugia gets even stronger now, which was already a shaky matchup for Charizard. So Charizard intrinsically as a deck still has all those strong pieces there, um, but it is definitely suffering from a poor matchup spread into the perceived metagame right now, including unfavored matchups against Dragapult, Lugia, and both Snorlax Stall and Pidgeot Control. One of the new decks out there now is Ogre Pond Raging Bolt. And if they tech in the Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond, it actually becomes an auto loss for most Charizard EX lists. So for the people who are brave enough to take Charizard into this new and undefined meta, you might want to tech in either Gouging Fire EX or Canceling Cologne, as either of those cards will give you an out to defeating a Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond that your opponent sticks into the active. Next at number eight, we've got Lost Zone Box. And Lost Zone Box is actually a deck about a a week ago I think I would have put higher on this list um, just because I think Sableye is very very strong into a metagame where Charizard isn't playing Jirachi and Dragapult isn't playing Jirachi and decks aren't expecting a turn two Lost Mine or a turn two like Gust Cologne Shuriken uh, which is what I've been building my Turbo Lost Zone decks towards um, but it still isn't that great into the meta. So it's going to have favored matchups against Maridon and Lost Zone Tina. Um, if Charizard Pidgeot keeps their Jirachis, then that stays probably an unfavored to close-ish matchup. Uh, but it just doesn't have a lot of great matchups going for it. It still has that versatility that Lost Zone Box has always had. And it now gains the new Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX, which a lot of decks can include pretty naturally. The biggest problem I've run into for Turbo Lost Zone Box is... Uh, somewhere between the Ogre Bolt matchup and the Lugia V-Star matchup. Ogre Bolt, if it's playing Switch Carts and Bravery Charms and maybe even a Penny, um, it can be pretty impossible to put enough damage on the board, um, especially when your Blood Moon or Saluna isn't knocking out a Raging Bolt if they put a Bravery Charm on it. And also especially because that Blood Moon or Saluna is probably not going to come into play until it's costing three energy. You can go for an early four energy or five energy Blood Moon or Saluna, but that will likely cause you to run out of resources as the game goes on. 
A side note for Lost Zone Box, there's also the Sablezard variant um, that doesn't play Radiant Greninja, playing Radiant Charizard instead. And that one is going to have a really good matchup against Ogre Bolt because you are uh, chaining Radiant Charizards ideally. Next at number seven, we've got the most hyped card out of Twilight Masquerade, which is Dragapult EX. And here's the thing, there's like a lot of ways you can build Dragapult EX. So we've got the Zatu build, which uh, originally people were thinking was the best, but I think it was just the easiest to play, the easiest to build, and therefore the most popular. Um, I had been saying from the start that I would test Dragapult Zatu, but it looked like it was always going to just like fall at like above average or mediocre. Um, while the other variants look like they have a little more going for them if you can optimize them and play them well. So the Dragapult Lost Zone Box variant looks really good because it can prevent a fully single prize board. However, uh, you probably will run into some clunky hands and weird draws just being a Lost Zone deck that has uh, a full evolution line in it and rare candies. Uh, it becomes a little awkward. Then we've also got the Dragapult Pidgeot version. Um, we have a list here from Shintaro Ito, former world champion. But I think the Dragapult Pidgeot version, while very consistent, uh, at least the way that Shintaro has built it here, I think it's super, super susceptible to like energy removal and stall and control strategies. Um, and even to just like whiffing the turn two setup, because I think this deck is assuming you get the turn two Draga Pidgey like you would with, um, with Charizard, but Charizard accelerates energy to itself. So here we're being forced to play Neo upper energy and also Mela to get an energy attachment back if we get knocked out too quickly. So I think the Dragapult Pidgeot might just be too fragile. And then uh, my favorite way in theory to play Dragapult is with Charizard EX and some sort of either Pidgeot EX line or B-Barrel line. Uh, this one is a little harder to figure out, but I think the potential for Dragapult is possibly, for, at least for NAIC, I think the potential for Dragapult lies within either the Lost Zone box engine with Radiant Charizard or alongside Charizard EX in some capacity. Now, Dragapult looked a lot better in Japan than it does right now, and that's because the meta has already warped around it. So, it has a couple of favored matchups, being Charizard Pidgeot and maybe Lost Zone Giratina. Um, and then it has a good bit of unfavored matchups now, even if we only count the top 10 decks. We're not even counting decks that are outside of the top 10, like Blissey EX, for example, which really, really beats Dragapult hard. Um, so, like Lugia V-Star, Ogre Bolt, uh, the Stall and Control variants, Maridon, and even Gardevoir, if you adapt to how Dragapult plays, you adapt to just playing Gardevoir EX as your main attacker. You also have the Monkey Dories to heal ping damage, maybe even Cresselia to heal ping damage. Um, there's a lot of decks that are prepared to beat Dragapult EX, so you need to be prepared to beat the decks that are prepared to beat you. <laughs> um, and I think the best way to play that is or the best way to do that is either playing the Lost Zone version of Dragapult because it's not really fully Dragapult because just a full Dragapult strategy is too easy to prepare for and take advantage of or the Charizard EX variant because like I said, just straight Dragapult I think is too susceptible to control and energy removal and too easy to prepare for and try to outspeed. Next at number six is the hottest deck right now, the most popular deck in online events, the most hyped deck, everybody's talking about it. We've got Raging Bolt and Teal Mask Ogre Pond, uh, colloquially known as Ogre Bolt. It's got a favored Dragapult matchup. That's where it originally uh, came from in Japan because of its favored Dragapult matchup. Um, it has an unfavored versus Gardevoir and also versus Lost Zone Sablezard, like I mentioned, but that's not expected to be like a mainstream popular deck at the moment. Um, so yeah, its worst matchup in the meta is Gardevoir, Snorlax, Stall, and Pidgeot Control. Uh, Gardevoir just outtrades it so hard. Um, but if Dragapult EX is going to be popular, which I'm not so sure it is, then Ogre Bolt could really farm those. And then it's got some close matchups against other meta decks as well. Uh, but yeah, Ogre Bolt is just really, really strong and aggressive and consistent. 
Um, and like I mentioned earlier, when we were talking about Charizard, it has the Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pony X tech as a possibility. So the Charizard matchup is weird. If you play Cornerstone and they don't play a tech for it, it's free. If you don't play Cornerstone Ogre Pond, it becomes a hard matchup. And then if you do play Cornerstone Ogre Pond and then they do play a tech, I think if the tech is canceling Cologne, you don't find out until it's too late and then you lose. If the tech is gouging fire, you might find out earlier and then can prepare for that but either way game two you just play without the cornerstone if you find out they have a tech so that's also a weird matchup to like put into matchup spreads and spreadsheets and stuff because like the one card tech on either side like drastically changes that next at number five is snorlax stall i know a lot of us are upset about snorlax stall but it's just another deck in the field that you're gonna have to figure out how to beat Snorlax Stall got the new Flute card, which is pretty good. Um, you can consider putting Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond in there. Uh, the Sand Shrew technology has been popular uh, ever since Azul's win in the previous format. Um, and, you know, we've got a great matchup against Ogre Bolt, which is currently the most popular deck. We've got a great matchup against Dragapult EX, which was the most hyped new archetype. Um, unfavored against Lugia V-Star, which has gotten very, very strong. So Snorlax Stall, I definitely expect to be successful at NAIC. I think it's going to be successful and uh, somewhat played in this meta. Probably played more than Pidgeot Control will be, but I don't think it's as good as Pidgeot Control, which brings us to number four, Pidgeot Control. Once again, All Out Blitzel has innovated a really good Pidgeot Control list that is seemingly just taking out everything uh we've got the chi uex for mill the luxury v for discarding resources from the hand the new wellspring mask ogre pawn ex with the sob attack when you put a double turbo on it's doing zero damage and locking the opponent's pokemon in the active it can't retreat plus with a hero's cape it has 310 health so even if they do get their active out they don't just guaranteed knock this thing out like they would if your active was a mawile um, and then something else important here is the Great Tusky X for knocking out Minchinos against Lugia. And Great Tusk also has a lot of HP. And then we've also got the new Blood Moon Ursaluna EX, which makes this deck like almost more like a mid rangey deck a lot of times than uh, a control deck because now you have Radiant Charizard and Blood Moon Ursaluna EX. This deck just has a lot of great attackers. So this might be the deck that benefits the most from Blood Moon Ursaluna, maybe aside from Lugia and Lost Zone decks. So yeah, Pidgeot Control has good matchups against Ogre Bolt, Snorlax Stall, Dragapult, and Charizard. Um, some of its worst matchups in the past, like Lugia V-Star, has now become almost an even matchup, it seems, at least from online tournament results and the theory about how to play out the matchup. Um, and its worst matches are going to be Gardevoir and Lost Zone Tina, which are beatable, especially more now than ever against Lost Zone Tina. Now we have the Blood Moon or Saluna and Radiant Zard, not just one of them. Uh, but yeah, those are typically going to be the bad matchups for Pidgeot Control. Number three, I, this is, I might be wrong about this, but number three, I've got Maridon. Its matchup spread just looks very good. Um, the worst matchups for it out of the top 10 decks in my opinion, are Charizard and Lost Zone Tina. And I expect both of those decks to be like sub 10%. And I don't think they're going to be extremely popular and successful into day two either. Uh, Lost Zone Tina might get more popular going into NAIC the more that stall and control get hyped. But um, I think unfavored Charizard, Pidgeot, and Lost Zone Tina, those are unfavored that I'm willing to take. Uh, and Maridon is really good against Dragapult, Lugia, and Gardevoir. Note that I've mentioned Lugia and Gardevoir a lot, and they haven't been mentioned on the list yet. And we've got two more spots to go. So Maridon is good against the most hyped archetype out of the new set. And it's good against the two decks that we haven't mentioned yet because they're higher on the list than Maridon. So uh, I don't like Maridon as a deck intrinsically the way it functions. But the matchup spread looks pretty good for Maridon. And next at number two is Gardevoir. Gardevoir gains a good bit from this new set in this meta, in this format. Um, we've got the new Monkey Dory that's going to be able to heal off damage from our Pokemon and also put damage on the opponent's Pokemon. Monkey Dory is a crazy card. 
um definitely the new mvp in gardevoir because now we're even running less tools to buff our hp just the two bravery charms in this list and also using the new unfair stamp instead of hero's cape is super good um but yeah so because of monkey dory you can move damage off of let's say your Drifloon and onto one of your opponent's pokemon putting 30 extra damage but then you're also putting Drifloon on odd damage counters so you're you'll be able to accelerate more energy and then putting more damage counters with the psychic embrace onto your Drifloon. Uh, so that adds a lot. You can also heal your guard of REX and effectively make it do 220 now with that 30 damage being moved, making guard of REX an even better attacker than it previously was. So looking at Gardevoir's matchup spread, it's got good matchups to Ogre Pond Raging Bolt, to Dragapult EX, Snorlax Stall, Pidgeot Control, and Lost Zone Tina. So Lost Zone Tina doesn't really matter too much. We're not expecting it to be popular. And then... Uh, the unfavoreds for Gardevoir are Lugia and Maridon. Um, so I definitely think Lugia players are going to, I'm sorry, I definitely think Gardevoir players are going to be thinking about how to counter Lugia and Maridon if those are the only two unfavoreds in the top of the meta. Uh, probably seeing Sinnoh and Enhanced Hammer to take care of Lugia. Maybe putting Klefki back into the deck to take care of Maridon or just hoping that Mimic you can slow them down enough. And finally, what I think might be the big bad of this format is actually Lugia V-Star Archeops. How did we get back to this? Its matchup spread looks absolutely insane. Somebody tell me it's not. We've got favored matchups to just about everything. Close matchup to Pidgeot Control, close matchup to Ogre Bolt, and its worst matchup is Maridon. And we're just going to take that. Maridon might not even be that popular. Let's just dodge Maridon. Lugia is OP. Now, the thing about Lugia is, is that it can be clunky. There's a lot of dead cards in the deck that are uh, necessary to be in there. The four Archeops, the line of Lugia V-Star, the 16 or 17 energies that you're running, cards like Jock that are just there to try to help you guarantee those Archeops is getting into the discard pile and finding your Lugia V-Star. We've also got Flippy Pokemon Search as the best possible search cards for the deck that's available, like Mesa Goza, Capturing Aroma. Even Great Ball isn't necessarily a coin flip, but in mine as well, because you never know what you're going to get with it. So the consistency, the actual functioning of the Lugia deck is the thing holding it back. And the thing holding it back from this just being a tier zero Lugia format. Um, but it's got great matchup spreads on paper. Lugia should dominate this tournament. So those are my top 10 decks for the Twilight Masquerade format. Let me know in the comments down below how wrong I am about these rankings and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon TCG content. Find ways to support my channel in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.